The Lord Jesus said, For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. During the last days, God has once again become flesh in the east, China. In 1991, Almighty God, Christ of the last days, appeared to do His work and utter His words. Since then, Almighty God has expressed millions of words and carried out the work of judgment beginning from the house of God. God's sheep hear His voice. The people of various denominations who loved the truth and yearned for God's appearance have recognized that Almighty God's words are the truth and that this is the voice of God. They believed that Almighty God was the return of the Lord Jesus, and one by one they came before Almighty God. But how could the satanic regime allow God to come to earth to express the truth and save humanity? Since the Church of Almighty God came into existence, the CCP regime has wildly suppressed and persecuted it. The CCP hates God and loathes the truth, vainly attempting to wipe out God's work in the last days. It has issued secret orders many times to mobilize armed police and military to suppress the church. The whole of mainland China rained blood, dark clouds descended, and there was universal outrage and indignation. Today, the Christians of all the house churches, particularly those of the Church of Almighty God, are experiencing even more brutal and bloody persecution by the CCP government. These Christians' bloodshed and loss of life are like a song of victory over the forces of Satan and tell the grisly tale of Chinese Christians' persecution. In May 2005, with several bouts of early summer rain in Shanghai, the temperature dropped, leaving a chill in the air. One night, dark clouds swelled and covered the night sky, followed by the threat of more rain and thunder. hospital in Shanghai received a patient in critical condition. He looked haggard. He was very weak and remained unconscious. You'll need to stay here. His condition was difficult for doctors to handle. He's severely anemic. Prepare for a transfusion. Doctor, look. What happened here? So many needle wounds. Sir, what caused this? My father had his blood taken while he was in jail. 300 milliliters of type A blood. The patient's name was Yu Dehui. He was a native of Yuqing, Zhejiang. In 2004, he was sentenced to a year in prison after arrest by the CCP for believing in Almighty God and performing his duties. While there, the police forced him to give blood over a long period, severely weakening him, though he was originally healthy. After his release, he was diagnosed with severe hemorrhagic anemia. He was suspected of having malignant tumors, and many hospitals couldn't treat him. With no options left, he was transferred to a large hospital in Shanghai, after less than a two-month stay, his medical bill was more than 100,000 yuan, but there was no improvement in his condition. Doctor. No, you don't need to do that. Doctor, please, I'm begging you. We've already transferred him many times. 
I just need you to be honest with me about my father's condition. Have a seat, please, sit. I'm sorry. But it doesn't the doctor told Yu Dehui's family his condition was serious, that the hospital couldn't treat it, on our expert diagnosis, and hinted that his days were probably I numbered. You take your father home. The doctor's words were shocking and painful for his family. When his wife, Wong Su Yun, heard he wasn't long for this world, she cried and cried. She could hardly believe that her husband, once perfectly healthy, had been tortured to that point after just 10 months in prison. Dehui. Yes? Hi there. <laughs> hey there. This Yu Dehui was a devout Christian, a friendly, kind man. Product. In fact, they have a lifetime warranty. He ran a successful hardware store in Huayan, okay. Jiangsu. I'll come by later to pick it up. All right, take care, huh? Thank you. Uh -huh. Excuse me. He was widely admired. And this is what you ordered last time. Oh, is that the one? It's all here. Great. Yes. In the 1960s, Yu Dehui became a Christian along with his mother. He believed for many years and was a passionate seeker. Brothers and sisters all described him as faithful oh, and loving. Oh, in 2002, Feng no, Guilan, who practiced her faith along with Yu Dehui, preached the kingdom gospel to him and his wife. Yu Dehui and his wife read much of Almighty God's word, recognized God's voice, became certain that Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus and happily accepted God's work of the last days. This is the voice of God. Yes. It's the return of the Lord Jesus. Thanks be to the Lord. You will surely, from the then on, my life, they often the read God's word, of the of came to understand many truths in, in their darkness, belief they had the never understood, and had even more faith in creation. following God. These words are wonderful. <laughs> After Yu De Hui and his wife accepted the gospel, they enthusiastically performed their duties when they weren't managing their business. They not only hosted church brothers and sisters, they also preached Almighty God's work in the last days to their brothers and sisters in the Lord, so that they all could hear God's voice and receive His salvation in the last days. The couple's lives became ever more meaningful, and their health kept improving. Especially Yu De Hui. Everyone close to him said he didn't look like someone in his 60s. Yu De Hui and his wife assumed their lives would continue this way. In 2004, the CCP launched a new round of religious persecution, heavily suppressing house churches, especially the Church of Almighty God. Many Christians in the Church of Almighty God were arrested in Jiangsu. Many more Christians were followed, photographed, and investigated by the police. In early May in Huai'an City, Jiangsu Province, the Qinghe, Huai'in, and Qingpu District Public Security Bureaus launched a coordinated campaign for a large-scale arrest of all local Christians from the Church of Almighty God. 
Yu De Hui's family had hosted many Christians, so he and his wife were closely watched by the CCP and became one of their foremost targets for arrest. Who is it? The neighborhood committee. Oh. Don't move! Don't go! What do you want? Get out. Are you doing hey, this? what is this? This way. How can you make random arrests? Hurry. Search the place and make it fast. Why are you arresting us? Because you believe in God. Here's some money, Captain. These are all church That's offerings. Our money. No, they're we not. We earned that from our business. We earned those for hard work. What gives you the right to take Please. our money? If we say the money is offerings, that's what it is. We're confiscating this. Take him away. Late that night, the police took Yu De Hui and his wife to a hotel. They were separated and secretly interrogated all night. What are the pins for these cards? Doc! What are the pins? Yu De Hui saw how despicable and vicious the CCP police were in their greed. They beat and tortured him nonstop, even tasing him in the chest. They were utterly evil and mad in their brutality. He was filled with indignation. What are the pins? Tell me. The accounts held his savings from a lifetime of hard work. Now will you talk? So he was determined not to tell them the pins. Oh, 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 oh. Chief. Oh. How's it going? He won't talk. Wang Su Yun was being tortured at church, the same leader? time. Answer me, huh? The police tried to force her to divulge names and identifying information of church leaders and other brothers and sisters. Who is your church leader? She wouldn't talk, so they kept her awake all day and night, not allowing her to sleep. Don't After you two sleep? days, her blood pressure had risen to 200. She was dizzy, her vision blurred, and she felt irregular heartbeats. But up. still, the police refused to let her go. Oh. Damn you! Meanwhile, Yu De Hui's brutal interrogation continued in secret. The police relentlessly beat him and kept him from falling asleep which the aged Yu De Hui found impossible to endure. Oh, bastard, you could have spared yourself all this by talking. Feeling that he was on the brink of death, he had no choice but to tell them the pins. More than 400,000 yuan of his personal savings was taken by the police. Their family definitely has more money, especially because- Later, when their children the tried church. to get the money back from the police, the police not only refused, but they shamelessly said that even though they knew it was money Yu De Hui had earned from a lifetime of hard work, they would still claim it was church offerings. It was several days after their arrest that their children and church brothers and sisters learned of it. Everyone sought back channels through connections to have them released. Their family spent a lot of money on dinners and gifts for local officials, who accepted every gift, but in the end, no one helped them. The Yu family felt both enraged and helpless.
Tell me, who is your church leader? Even after getting Yu De Hui's pins, they still wouldn't let him go. They continued their brutal questioning, ceaselessly demanding information about the church's offerings and leaders. Go home, just like that. Yu De Hui, by this point, covered in wounds, felt weakness in his heart. He silently prayed to God, vowing to die before he became a Judas. Realizing he wouldn't give them more, the police forbade him to eat or sleep. Several days later, seeing his weak condition, they finally let him have a bit of congee. Who said you could sleep? tortured for over half a month, yet didn't betray a single person. Despite his grievous wounds and weakened state, he was more concerned about his wife's safety, afraid she might be tortured to death. I'll talk. Hold on. We have more money. He had an idea Take and gave it a shot go get with a me. sliver of hope. Move it. Let's go. didn't find the money Yu De Hui told Wang them Su about. Where is the money? As they were about to leave, the police saw Wang Su Yun was at her last gasp. Afraid of the hassle if she died on their watch, they just left her there. Get everyone, we're going back. But they were unwilling to let Yu De Hui go. He was detained illegally for a month then transferred to a detention center to await sentencing. The Yu family spent more money to pull strings with high-level CCP officials to save him. Sir, this is our gift to you. The situation is, the government has defined house churches as Xi Jiao's, especially the Church of Almighty God. Officials told the Yu family, the government has always suppressed religion and is working to eliminate house churches. Arrests of Church of Almighty God members are especially severe. Once arrested, believers in Almighty God are political prisoners and no one can help them. In July of 2004, the Huai'an Municipal Court secretly sentenced Yu De Hui to a year in prison for the crime of illegally using a Xie Jiao organization to undermine the enforcement of the law without notifying his family. On the eve before he was to be sent to a reform through labor camp, Wang Suyun and the rest of his family visited Yu De Hui at the detention center. Dad. Dad, how did you get so thin? I'm useless as a son. I, I couldn't protect you. Dad, Mom made this earlier today. Have some? Mom. 
fine. Don't worry about me. Go home. Take care of yourselves. I'll be all right. Her husband claimed to be fine. But Wang Su Yun saw from her husband's haggard state and the bruises on his hands that he had suffered a great deal since his arrest. Briefly seeing Yu De Hui only made Wang Su Yun more worried for her husband. That's it, time's up. Dad! In spite of his age, more prison torture by the CCP was awaiting him. The question was could he physically withstand it? Not long after the family visit, Yu De Hui was sent to a reform through labor camp in Jiangsu. He never could have imagined that this would bring him into a still darker and more sinister place. It was the rainy season in Huai'an, and the weather was dreary. There was no respite from the rain. Since Yu Dehui's sentencing, Wang Su Yun was concerned for his safety. She was suffering from a health problem herself, and she had to bear the misunderstanding and criticism of her relatives and neighbors. Worn down by her troubles, her face was soaked in tears every day, and she was tortured mentally and physically. Before long, she was diagnosed with high blood pressure and sent to the hospital. To alleviate Yu Dehui's suffering, his family used every possible connection to give gifts to the labor camp guards. The police used the opportunity to extort them for significant sums. His children also deposited money into his expense accounts at the prison. They didn't realize that Yu Dehui not only wouldn't receive the money or any care from the guards, but he would be subjected to unspeakable torment and harm. Move. Come on. Hurry up. Sit down. Don't oh. Oh. Sit down. Oh. Don't resist. Oh. Over soon. It turned out that at the labor camp, the guards took blood from Yu De Hui against his will over long periods. After his release, he said he had heard other prisoners there say that the guards sold the blood to drug addicts with impaired hematopoietic function. But as to exactly why the guards did this so frequently for so long, and what they did with the blood, Yu Dehui's family would never know the answer. The frequent drawing of blood Hurry up. caused Yu Dehui's health to deteriorate. He often felt dizzy and seemed to develop heart problems. The daily strenuous physical labor and the prison food without proper nutrients made Yu De Hui thinner and weaker as the days went by.
waiting for visitations, was an ordeal both for Yu De Hui and his family. And each short visit only made them more worried about him. Dad. The next time she saw her husband, Wang Suyun felt as if her heart would shatter. She forced Dad, back her tears as she asked why he was so thin. Looking at his worried wife, Yu De Hui just claimed he hadn't been eating well or sleeping well. I'm fine. It's just sometimes I don't get enough food and rest, but I'll be okay. Looking at his thin frame, their hearts ached. They figured he had been cruelly tortured. Time's up. Please take care of yourself. Dad. But right, there was nothing go. they could do, and no one to complain to. Back at home, Wang Suyun was more worried and anxious than ever. She felt like she had lost her soul and would often stare blankly. When she saw church brothers and sisters, she told them what had happened to Yu Du Hui. He's suffering. He's so thin, I barely Yu Du Hui's story pierced Fang Guilin's heart like a knife. She had never imagined that the CCP was ruthless even toward elderly Christians arresting and then brutally crushing them, and that it was utterly merciless. was in his 60s. But the CCP police kept taking his blood without a care for whether he lived or died. I beg you, please. The amount drawn was far beyond the limits of what a normal person could endure. Let go Sit down. Don't squirm. Why are you taking my blood? What are you doing with all this blood? Just do what we say. This is against the law. Against the law? The Communist Party is the law. Is there any humanity left in you? Shut your damn mouth! Don't move! Don't. It's no good. His vein is collapsed. Someone, draw the blood. Don't. Don't you know I could die? Die? We don't care if you all die. Brutality, day after day, was like a never-ending nightmare. Yo De Hui felt like he was living in hell. He spent every day in terror, not knowing when they would come to take his blood. Each time his blood was drawn, he was left feeling hopeless and terrified. He suffered terrible physical and mental harm. Without prayer, he would have had no way to go on. Ah! 
After more than 10 months at the labor camp, he went from about 80 kilograms before his arrest to roughly 60 kilograms. He looked like a walking skeleton. By Yu De Hui's account, about 500 milliliters were taken at his final blood draw. After which, his body finally reached its limit. In early May of 2005, the Yu family suddenly received notice that he was being released early. They raced to pick him up. The prison gate slowly opened before them, and they saw a haggard, weak-looking old man. Hard to recognize as the same loved one they worried about day Dad. and night. Dad. very weak. He kept saying he felt dizzy and especially uncomfortable. Son, drive faster. Quickly, the family brought him to the hospital. Doctor, how is he? Let's talk outside. Doctor, what's going on with Dawi? Yes, how is he? He was so severe. The expert diagnosis was severe hemorrhagic anemia. Stand right now. The doctors told his family he required timely blood transfusions as well as nutritious foods to fortify the blood, and they recommended expensive nutritional supplements. They also suspected he had a malignant tumor. The tumor, they said, may have been caused by harsh living conditions and frequent blood draws. The doctors recommended further tests after Yu De Hui had recovered a bit. One time to pay your fees. All of Yu De Hui's children withdrew their savings to pay for his treatment. The way things are going, I have to go find but in money. the end, they still couldn't afford such expensive medical bills over the long term. Learning this was distressing for Yu De Hui. He asked to go home to spare his children. Let's just go home. Don't. Dad. That's just crazy. But his children insisted that he continue Dad, the treatment. We can't go home now. He was we transferred to other hospitals well, several times, ultimately okay. to the large hospital in Shanghai. They couldn't treat him either. With their options exhausted, they could only send him home to recover. There. Yu De Hui and his wife were under intense surveillance by the CCP. They lost contact with all their church brothers and sisters. This pained Yu De Hui, and his condition worsened. 
Wang Suyun had suffered long-term mental strain. And soon, her high blood pressure grew worse, and she developed diabetes. Su Yun. Yu Du Hui worried Su about his wife's health. Su Yun. But in his condition, he Su couldn't Yun. take care of her like he had in the past. Oh. 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 Su Yun. His condition worsened in March of 2007, and the Yu family couldn't afford to pay for his treatment. So Wang Su Yun was forced to sell their last remaining house. Then, she brought Yu Du Hui to the hospital in Huai'an. Da Hui, are you okay? The circumstances aren't Perhaps good. sensing that his time was running out, Yu De Hui told his wife he wanted to see Fang Guilin, who had preached the kingdom gospel to them. I'll take care of it, Da Hui. Which room is Yu De Hui in? Yu De Hui? Room 17. That way. Okay, thank you. Fang Guilin had finally found the hospital after a roundabout search. She and the others in the church had heard about Yu De Hui's situation long before and wanted to visit, but couldn't get in touch with the Yu's. Now, about to see the brother she hadn't seen for years, Fang Guilin felt both hopeful and on edge. Sister Wang. Sister Wang. I'm so glad I finally found you. Yes. When she finally saw Yu De Hui, she was shocked. The strong, healthy, energetic Yu De Hui she had known was gone. The man in his place looked haggard, withered, and skeletal. Sister Fung is His here eyes were you. sunk deep in their sockets, and he was like a bag of bones. Suffered so much. The little I suffered, it doesn't matter. God has returned. My greatest blessing has been getting to follow Him. Yu Du Hui was so weak that even speaking left him gasping for breath. Despite this, he described what he suffered during his arrest and torture. Some negativity and weakness. And Hearing that, what Yu Du Hui had endured filled Fang Guilan with grief and indignation. The CCP's ruthless persecution of Christians was truly intolerable. I wouldn't be able to bear it, that I would fail everyone and myself, and sell you out. But I relied on God, and didn't betray anyone. Not a single Thank person. Thank God. At the time I thought, if I gave them the list of names, I would get to go home. But how could I ever explain myself? I'd never be able to face my brothers and sisters, and especially 
not God. God despises Judas's, so I bore it alone and didn't tell them anything. Even if they killed me, I wanted to stand firm and testify for God. Day in the hospital, doctors found a swollen lymph node in De Huy's neck, and suspecting cancer, took a tissue sample. However, before the results came out, Yu De Huy started losing lucidity, at some times worse than others. His condition became critical again on April 18th, floating between lucid and confused states. He seemed to sense his time was running out and insisted on returning to his hometown in Zhejiang. Doctor, how is he? I'm sorry. He's gone. <gasps> Doctor, you have to save him, please! Doctor! On April 21st, 2007, just half an hour after arriving home, Yu De Hui stopped breathing and he departed from this world. He was 64. His family didn't dare file a lawsuit after his death, fearing further CCP persecution they were forced to swallow their grief and cried as they buried Yu De Hui. Yet another Christian had been unjustly murdered through the CCP's brutality. Yu De Hui's case is only the tip of the iceberg. The CCP's crimes against Christians are too many to list. Their blood debt cannot be quantified. The living must continue on after the dead have passed. 
The passage of time takes away the years, but it doesn't heal the scars in our hearts. Even now, years later, when Wang Suyun thinks of that suffering branded in her heart, she is filled with grief and distress. She and her husband were arrested and cruelly tortured by the CCP just for having faith and doing their duties. A happy family was torn apart, leaving only irredeemable pain and sorrow. <laughs>